every so often in culture, there is this landmark moment, this thing that is so ubiquitous and big that it completely changes the game. Everybody wants to be in at the ground floor of finding something cool before everyone knows what it is. Or if something is really, really big, you want to know about it so that you can experience it with everybody else. If you consider yourself a fan of fantasy, maybe you loved The Lord of the Rings or The Chronicles of Narnia, or you are somebody that got into fantasy through television through Game of Thrones. Maybe you're really into the Witcher series. Maybe you read some classic fantasy like Robin Hobb or Patrick Rothfuss. Or if you are a more recent fan of the modern TV adaptations that are happening in fantasy with like the new Lord of the Rings show or somehow you're somebody that likes the new Wheel of Time show. No shame, I guess. But maybe you are someone who has sort of loved the genre or dabbled in the genre and the cultural zeitgeist around fantasy right now has you hyped to find out what other cool things are happening in fantasy right now. This is the video for you. I am here to tell you about the biggest thing in fantasy right now. Over the past 15 years in the movie realm, we saw the explosion of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and in the MCU, multiple different stories starring different characters in different genres with different tones came together to create the cultural touchstone that was Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. If you want to know what is the fantasy version of that that has been happening over the same time period that you may have missed because they're in books, I would like to tell you about The Cosmere, a series of interconnected novels that take place in the same universe by arguably the most popular author of our time. Brandon Sanderson. The draw of the Cosmere is a similar level of interconnection, but the scale of this interconnection on a cosmic Cosmere scale, tied together with the fact that each of these series is amazing and incredible in their own right with really cool plot lines and amazing characters, means that if you have not experienced the Cosmere for yourself, you are doing yourself a major disservice. As I alluded to before, the Cosmere is made up of different stories that take place on different planets inside the same universe, and each of these planets has their own set of physics and magical properties that manifest in different and unique ways that allow for the creation of really cool and interesting stories inside each of them and characters that learn to utilize and take advantage of the magic systems within each of these worlds over the course of really unique plot arcs and character development in ways that beg to be explored. Let's give a quick recap of Brandon Sanderson's origin story and claim to fame in the fantasy world. The Wheel of Time, which you may know as a classic super huge popular fantasy book series that is becoming a television show on Amazon Prime, tragically had its author die before the series was completed. Robert Jordan, the author of The Wheel of Time's estate, essentially hired Brandon Sanderson to finish off The Wheel of Time. And the completion of The Wheel of Time allowed Brandon Sanderson to get a huge popularity boost for when he wanted to start his own series, or series within a series, which is what the Cosmere is filled with. In the time between Brandon Sanderson finishing The Wheel of Time, he has become one of the best-selling fantasy authors of all time and one of the most critically regarded in the fantasy realm. He took the awesome things that worked about classic fantasy and incorporated the modern sensibility of character-based storytelling and crafting unique fantasy magic systems that could define the culture and politics and characters contained in those stories to epic success and epic proportion. Because of this success, when Brandon Sanderson launched a Kickstarter for publishing some unannounced Cosmere books with his Kickstarter raising over $26 million in 30 days for four more surprise books, three of which also take place within the Cosmere. With that level of recognition and success, Brandon has now announced that he has more than one streaming service competing for adaptations of one or more of his fantasy works to be brought to either television or movie. I'm telling you guys, if you want to know what the next big thing in fantasy is, it's the freaking Cosmere. Hopefully, if you've never heard of the Cosmere, I have convinced you to try giving it a shot and you are interested to find out where you should jump in. Or if you're someone who's aware of the Cosmere but has never yet dipped your toes into it, shame, shame, shame. So now that I've hopefully got you hooked, let's talk about where you should jump into the Cosmere yourself. From an approachability standpoint and to find the best quick glimpse of what you will find in Brandon Sanderson's fantasy worlds, I would recommend the world of Mistborn. Mistborn started with the original Mistborn trilogy of books that takes place on a planet where the magic is based around metal. Digesting different types of metal gives certain magic users different magical properties that allow them to do superhuman things. And the premise of 
of Mistborn is, what if there was a group of heroes that tried to stop a bad guy, and they failed to stop that bad guy, and instead the bad guy continued ruling for a very long time? That brings us to the world of the first Mistborn book, The Final Empire, where this evil emperor has been ruling for a very long time, and in something that Brandon Sanderson calls My Fair Lady Meets the Heist book, we see a group of ragtag misfits band together in a sort of Ocean's Eleven style heist against the emperor. The My Fair Lady bit comes when they try to schmooze and wine and dine uh, fancy uh, high ranking people within the town. So they have to go to balls and uh, deceive people and try to figure out the political maneuverings so they can pull off this heist. There's humor, there's incredible character work, and on top of that the characters are using this metal based magic system to kick serious butt. But not everything about the magic in this world is understood and as the characters sort of figure out how it works the reader will be brought along on that ride in the tale that spans this epic trilogy of the Mistborn series. The original Mistborn trilogy comes to a very awesome and epic conclusion of massive proportions, and that is a set story. But there is a separate series of books that takes place in the same world. We refer to it as Mistborn Era 2. Mistborn Era 2 takes place hundreds of years after the conclusion of the events of the original trilogy, but instead of just trying to tell a sequel type story in a normal sense, the events from the first trilogy are sort of treated with this mystical, almost religious, history aspect and Mistborn Era 2 takes place in a burgeoning industrial age with steampunk elements with like train heists and guns and western fighting mixed in with the magical abilities that still exist in this world and there are lore tie-ins to the events that happen in Mistborn Era 1 but this is its own very separate tonal story. Mistborn Era 2 very much feels like what if Batman was a western that had magic but it twists all the tropes around on their head so instead of Batman being someone that never kills anybody? What if Batman was essentially somebody that left high society to go be a crazy vigilante lawman in the wilds and then something brings him back to society and he's got all these rough tendencies while the world is changing around him? This one is filled with a lot more humor. It's just some of the most fun you can have in fantasy period and it exists within the Cosmere and Mistborn era too. This is probably one of the most unique things happening in fantasy and guess what? Book four in Mistborn era two, the conclusion of Mistborn era two comes out this November. You definitely have time to catch up on Mistborn Era 2. These books are pretty short and they are very fun. Which is to not say they're light on substance. Mistborn Era 2 I think has some incredible incredible way underrated thematic exploration of incredibly deep and complex themes. But you don't have to engage with them unless you really want to. It's a perfect story that blends depth with fun. If you can't tell, I freaking love Miss Porn Era 2. I feel like this is a great opportunity to mention that if you love what I've said so far and the Cosmere sounds really awesome to you, you might consider subscribing to the channel. I talk about the Cosmere a lot. It's clearly a series I love. And if you'd like to see more videos of me talking about the Cosmere or other awesome things happening in fantasy or sci-fi right now, subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos really helps. While you're down there, please smash that like button. Unlike some fantasy authors, Brandon Sanderson's work is incredibly approachable from a reader's standpoint. The depth of his stories comes from his character development and his world building. It does not come from his prose, so it's really easy to pick up his books and just go. Yes, there can be a lot of things happening, but Brandon does a really good job about explaining things that you need to know along the way. But if jumping right into a seven book series in Mistborn sounds like a lot, there are standalone entries to the Cosmere as well. The first of these that I will talk about is Elantris. This is Brandon Sanderson's first published book, and his writing is not as good as it was eventually later on. But that doesn't make this book not awesome. Awesome. Elantris takes place in a world where there's this magic city that was filled with these beautiful, incredibly powerful people that were able to just write things and make them take place in the world. They, it was this wonderful, beautiful utopia. And then one day, it wasn't. Something changed with the magic. And now when someone was touched by the magic, instead of being blessed and powerful and able to enact these wonderful miracles, when someone became touched with the magic, they were essentially zombies. If you were touched with the magic, you became immortal, but your body could no longer heal from normal injuries. Because of this, you were essentially treated like a leper and cordoned off in the old city that used to be this wonderful, majestic place. It now essentially became Brandon Sanderson's version of a zombie haven. And the people living in these cities no longer needed 
needed to eat or drink, but they also could not heal. So generally everyone would live in this city and gangs would form and they would slowly go insane because they would live forever, but they would constantly be living in pains that racked up over time. When one of our main characters who is very important in this world becomes afflicted with this disease, he is thrown into the zombie city. The politics and religious exploration that take place that the other characters around this story make it really, really interesting how everything comes together in the end. Another thing that Brandon Sanderson is really known for is having Having ridiculously crazy snowball building endings that are so climactic that they've become known as the Sanderlanch. Elantris, even Brandon Sanderson's first book, has one of those and it's crazy. It's wild people. One of the coolest things about the Cosmere is that the more of the Cosmere you read, the more you find out about the greater universe in general, and the more you start to see specific characters that showed up in one book show up in this other book. What is their motivations? How did they get there? Are they becoming more powerful? How do the powers from different worlds transfer to these other worlds? These are all very interesting things to consider. Let me talk about another one of Brandon Sanderson's standalones. Though it is eventually set to get a sequel, right now the book Warbreaker is a standalone with a complete story. Story. Warbreaker is a story that is told in a world whose magic system is based on color and the ability to breathe life into things or take life away from things and you can use those breaths to better comprehend the world around you and then you can also use them to control things. People have the ability to give their breath to others and to store more than one breath but every person gets only one breath and the entire society of Warbreaker is based around a religious and political system that involves the higher power people taking breaths from lower power people to uh, take care of them like taxes almost but also the exorbitant lifestyle of those who are essentially gods because they contain so many more breaths than other people that they rule over the world and it's it's very complicated and as you might be able to tell from the title there's a lot of political tension warbreaker is the name of the book the main characters in warbreaker are two princesses to the same king one was raised for a political marriage to make an alliance between two cities and the other one was sort of treated as a well you go do you you're like the younger daughter we we let you do what you want to do now that i'm thinking about it it sort of feels like the biblical story of joseph uh, and the coat of many colors interesting but the other daughter is sort of favored and allowed to sort of do what they want to do but they're not trained in the arts of like dealing with people politically but in the story we have a prince and pauper situation where the sisters positions are flipped and they now have to sort of do each other's roles and that creates a really awesome scenario for character development for both of these girls as they explore the magic and explore the world and explore the different classes of society and religion and expectations that are put on you when you're young really really good let's say you're a fan of the marvel cinematic universe because you love comics you love comic books, you maybe love DC, I don't know what's wrong with you if you do, or maybe you're correct and you love Marvel, and you think it would be really cool to experience some of the Cosmere, but you're not a book type person. Well, guess what? There's a series of novels in the Cosmere known as White Sand. This is the only major story in the Cosmere that I don't have a ton of experience with. I'm just reading White Sands for myself the first time. It's pretty cool so far. It's broken into three different volumes. I've done with the first one. But White Sand has sort of a dune feel where there's these people that live in the desert that have the ability to control sand with magic. And there's this whole class of society of ranking people based on how much uh, they can control the magic. And our main character is someone who can control the sand, but not as well as he wants to. Unfortunately, his father is essentially the king of those who control sand. So he's a disappointment to his father, but all he wants to do is prove his father wrong. Well, things quickly go south and the world gets turned on its head and he has to now figure out a way to utilize his power and understand his power while also finding his place in the world. So I'm just saying, even if you're not a book person, there's a place in the Cosmere for you. If you are still watching, let's talk about the massive elephant in the room. Epic fantasy is known to be called epic fantasy because of its massive scale. And everything that I've told you is pretty big so far, but I have not mentioned the most massive piece of the Cosmere thus far, which is called the Stormlight Archive. The Stormlight Archive is still in process. It is essentially Brandon Sanderson's magnum opus. It is supposed to be a book series that takes place over two sets of five books and the first one is not even done yet but the first part of the stormlight archive is the way of kings my favorite book of all time this book is over a thousand pages if you're the type of person that likes to listen to an audiobook it is a 45 hour audiobook just for book one 
but it is so freaking worth it. If you are the type of person looking for something meaty to chew on, you want to dive deep and hard into that fantasy, you don't want to play around, the Stormlight Archive is the place to do it because The Way of Kings is an amazing book and there's three more plus a ton of novellas in this series. These four books make up what we have of the Stormlight Archive so far and it is my favorite fantasy series if you don't just include the Cosmere as one. As you can tell, these are dense chonkers. This is like 200 hours of audiobook, thousands of pages of regular book, incredible deep characters, incredible world building, and the fan base for the Stormlight Archive is rabidly passionate. These things are amazing, and this is the deep level of fantasy you might be looking for if you're craving to know what's massive in fantasy right now. These are size-wise, these are popularity-wise, and these are also just they're that awesome. If you were the type of person that is looking for that super, super meaty thing, you know who you are and you should read the Stormlight Archive. I started the Cosmere with the Stormlight Archive because I'm that kind of nerd. In addition to all of those books and series that I talked about, there are many novellas and short stories that take place within the Cosmere that flesh out details of different worlds, some of which are covered in the series and some of which are not. And as I sort of alluded to before, there are three more unannounced Cosmere books coming next year as part of the Kickstarter. Those three books take place on new Cosmere planets with new Cosmere magic systems, and they are all likely to be huge, popular, massive successes. I was able to read the preview chapters for all of them, and I am incredibly hyped for them all. Basically, what this entire video boils down to is, if you want to know what is hot in fantasy right now, you need to check out The Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson. If you want to know what is cool before all of your friends find out when it turns into a TV show or a movie, you should check out The Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson. And if you're just looking for a heck of good time having fun with fantasy characters and magic, you should check out The Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson. Please let me know if I've convinced you in the comments down below. There's a Discord down below where we can also talk about The Cosmere. Please remember to like and subscribe. But most importantly, remember The Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson. I urge you. I can't command you. I'm not your dad, but I am your best friend. See you next video. Sleep, no, I never get enough. Always looking out tired. Sleep, no, I never get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired. Sleep, no, I never get enough. Always looking out tired, sleep. No, I never get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired.